Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a closer look at the TMNT IDW collection. This is volume 7. It says on the back here, a new age begins for the turtles as the epic events of the past have created new opportunities for the future, but new dangers as well. While they continue to get used to a world leading the Foot Clan post-Shredder, they return to the Tecrodome to monitor the revival of the Utrums on Bunro Island and are surprised to meet a new mutant Leatherhead. But will the mysterious mutant be a friend or foe? Poskatsune still poses a threat and a new group, the Street Phantoms, enters the fray. So let's take a closer look at the book itself and then we can come back and discuss my thoughts on the book overall. As with all the other volumes, we have a character on the front. This time it's Michelangelo and the colour kind of continues throughout the rest of the, the kind of look. So you've got the orange down the side here with the matching kind of katana and number seven. You've got Michelangelo on the back again and the colour kind of continues round on here and then we've got as I say our kind of synopsis overall. This volume actually doesn't have a ribbon. I think they've stopped doing that with any future prints now which is a little bit disappointing but it is what it is um, and the binding though is still sewn and lifts up really well so not an, an issue there at all. As with all the volumes we get a character kind of designed with all the kind of important stuff first and then it breaks into the issue numbers and what kind of order they're going to do things in. This volume is all main series, so there's not really anything to worry about um, as far as making sure you're kind of covering anything or skipping over anything, so you don't really need to look at this in this, this particular volume, but it's nice to be there. We also get the covers with the issue numbers at the start of each issue, which is nice and just kind of lets you know where you're, where you're at. As with all these books, I've not really had an issue reading them. I stretch out the spine a couple of times before I kind of put them on my shelf when I first get them, and then probably again um, just before kind of reading them. So everything that you know I've read out of the, the sort of Team and T run has read totally fine and not given me any issues as far as kind of laying the book out. So I'm going to skip to the back because I don't want to spoil the end of this. Let's just go to the back of here. There's usually one or two little things. So we've got a couple of covers. And then Leatherhead and the end pages. Up until now, we've had the new origin of the turtles themselves, or reincarnation if you like, some ties to the um, Foot Clan and sort of Shredder fighting him, and sort of finally, obviously kind of um, winning and taking over the, the Foot Clan overall. Um, we had the fight against Krang and his various kind of Utrum types and what they've kind of been doing with the Technodome. And a lot of these kind of key things were all stuff that was covered in the comics, um, sorry not covered in the comics, covered in the TV show so far. So this is a lot of just reimagining of things I already kind of knew other than the Mutanimals, which were all kind of fairly new to me. So they've been some of the most fun bits of the, of the kind of books so far. This book is in its entirety all issues from the main Turtle series. So it says here it contains issues 51 through 64 of the ongoing series. There are no tie-ins, no spin-offs, no extras, 
And that's why, as I say, it feels like this is a very solid starting point for uh, a new kind of arc. So I guess um, I'm going to have to say sort of spoilers at this point if you haven't already kind of seen my spoiler warning. But I'm just sort of saying that to make sure that, you know, if you are going to read this specific book, I don't want to be mentioning stuff. So, you know, maybe move away and come, come back once you've read it. This book itself covers the sort of turtles and um, Splinter taking over the Foot Clan, how they kind of connect with that. And this is very much a, a Mikey story, which is good because some of these books have got the character on the cover and it doesn't really tie to that character too much. So it's nice to see that Mikey is the main kind of um, character in this, if you like. It's based around his kind of dislike of running the clan. Like he wanted to beat the clan, but not take over the clan. He wanted to just eliminate them. Um, but what we forget is that the Foot Clan are their kind of forefathers in a way, like the Foot Clan is their people, um, and although we've always been led to believe that they're bad by current terms, the Foot Clan were a good group to begin with and Splinter kind of wants to fix that. So there's that kind of clash, if you like, between Michelangelo's kind of drives and Splinter's kind of drives, and that goes throughout the book kind of overall. As it mentioned on the back, we go and we try and um, revive some of the various Utrams on um, sort of the island. Um, we meet this new Leatherhead guy who we're not sure whether or not we can kind of trust and that all kind of comes out and explains itself towards the sort of tail end of the book as to sort of what side or drives um, he's kind of, kind of tied to. Um, we get a bit more around the Mutanimals in here even though, as I say, isn't a spin-off, it does tie them into the, the main story, which is nice to see. Um, and just a, a really, really good um, arc overall from sort of start to finish as to where the turtles stand and where they're gonna kind of be going forward. Um, so yeah, really, really interesting. It felt a little bit, um, in a way, like the first volume of the Buffy season 8 books where they kind of written themselves into a corner and they use the dilemmas and moral stances of the characters in order to shake things up enough in order for the story to continue in a way that they want it to. So I don't want to spoil what changes or what happens by the end of this book and what it kind of sets up. The art does have dips throughout the book where April's face doesn't look um, all that great and I've mentioned that in some previous sort of videos that her kind of looks or the humans um, kind of looks kind of come and go throughout the, the various kind of volumes depending on the artists involved um, but generally speaking the turtles always look pretty good even if they are slightly taller or slightly shorter on a different kind of artist. So really enjoyed the run, definitely recommend reading this one if you've been sort of reading them so far. Um, the next volume, I believe, is almost the complete opposite, where it's pretty much all tie-ins. Um, so we'll we'll see how much I enjoy that or not, as the as the kind of case may be. Um, but I've definitely been in, enjoying these so far, and plan on sort of continuing reading through. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know I haven't done one for uh, a little while for the turtles ones, and just wanted to kind of get back on that. Um, let me know below if you've been reading the run and uh, what your thoughts on this book if you have read it or if you're planning on sort of picking it up going forward. I'd be interested to hear to say what your kind of opinions are. Um, as always though, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more videos like this in future. Rate the video and share it with your friends if you think they'd be interested in learning a bit more about the turtles and I'll see you guys in the next one.